Hello, travelers. Boardman21 here, and let's discuss today some of these uniques that maybe are low level or that we've never used or that we wouldn't use or maybe only used for leveling and see how they do when they become a legendary unique. Now, these ones are going to be the easiest ones to get legendary potential on if they fall for you in the end game. They also can roll with legendary potential, but at a much lower rate in the lower game. But these are some of the lowest level uniques that could be game changing or very viable as end game builds or being on end game builds due to the fact that they have the highest potential or the highest chance of becoming a high legendary potential drop and you being able to add multiple affixes to them. Now, what those exact rates are, I'm not sure. This could take quite a while to do, but let's go ahead and get started with some uniques that could be devastatingly powerful as a legendary item. First up, we have the Arboreal Circuit. Now, this thing's got move speed. Its base is a silver ring, so you can already have up to 8% movement speed, and then it also can give you up to 10% increased move speed as an affix for movement speed for you and your minions. It also has a chance to summon a tree that basically taunts two screens away, which is a very big mechanic and can save your life a lot of times if you've recently taken a hit and procced it. It also gives minions armor, but we're not too worried about that. The things that you could add to this to make it into a great item is the fact that you can now get your health or critical strike avoidance or two different resistances. If you are playing a minion build, you can get minion damage, minion health, or minion dodge. If you're playing a damaging build for yourself, that movement speed for you to be able to speed run through is absolutely crazy. So in the end game, being able to put two of these on and be able to have four affixes or up to four affixes, which a four legendary potential unique is very rare, but considering this is a level one unique, it's one of the highest chance uniques to ever have that possible. You could have basically the normal ring you're wearing, but with better affixes, but now with up to 18% more move speed with both of your ring slots, which is huge. That's a lot of move speed. You can get up to 36% increased move speed just from your rings. And there's some other uniques we'll talk about where there's even more move speed. Some of these builds at endgame could really go zoom, zoom. The next unique that we have is the Arrow Guard. So this is one that I've already tried wearing on my Bow Mage at end game because you really want that glancing blow. It really increases your survivability. It gives you a huge chunk of increased armor, gives you some flat armor, and then gives you up to that 50% chance for a glancing blow and hit. This is also a very low level unique. It's very common. And this is another one. If you can add three or four fixes to this and you could get your increased bow damage or bow attack speed and then at the same time get in two of your resists or you could even roll more increased armor and more flat armor on it, you can really beef up the tankiness of your bow mage or of your marksman in general just with this one unique. Arter's Legacy, while this is a bit of a higher level one, it was still below the level 50 threshold that I was kind of basing this on. This one is obviously going to be really, really good. It's already used in a lot of endgame builds so that you can get that sixth companion, but the fact that you can now throw up to four affixes on it, which would be very, very rare, even if you got two or three affixes, just giving yourself more health or being able to go vitality or being able to use those class-specific rare affixes on the prefixes, there are some crazy things you'll be able to do with Arter's Legacy, including now giving plus levels to the wolves themselves. For the Bleeding Heart, this one is probably one of the least used, but very mandatory in certain builds unique. So if you're doing a dot build, the Bleeding Heart is almost required because you need all damage leech as health because there's not very many sources of dot damage being leeched as health. There's a couple of uniques out there that give you like bleed damage leeched or physical over damage over time leeched, but there's not very many that give you all of damage leeched. Some give you overkill damage, but this one's very powerful, especially since it can give you up to 9% of damage leached as health. And what's crazy about that is it's a very low level unique. This one has one of the higher potentials for a higher legendary potential. And this one, even with two or three affixes add to it, whether it be increasing your damage or having yourself with more prefixes that you could just, you know, give yourself anything crit chance if you weren't running a dot build or if you were giving yourself penetration for the dot that you were pushing. You can give yourself more health, resistance, frailty on hit, all of, all of those things that you can put on a normal amulet. Putting those on here would make it into a very endgame viable build for maybe more than just dot builds. That amount of leech for anything is a lot of leech. All right, up next we have Chimera's Essence. And this one I think is going to be huge for the next patch, especially with all of the transformation things going on with the Druid. I think this one's going to be a big one. Now, while it does reduce all resistance while transformed, the fact that you can now have increased speed and a lot of increased damage and throw more fixes on there to cover maybe some of those resistances that you'd be losing, 
I see this as being a really good unique for a lot of the transformation builds coming in the next patch. We have the Cinder Song, and while this has a low amount of base damage, the Cinder Song is always one of those ones with the two extra projectiles for Fireball that a lot of people have tried to get to work in the endgame. And perhaps with making it a legendary, there's a chance to make it do so. Now, you can't get more flat added damage to it, which makes it very difficult unless that's a new affix they add in the next patch. So it's going to be hard to scale, but you could get more increased fire damage or spell damage added to it, along with chance for frailty on hit or anything else that you really want to put on there. It might make it viable enough at least to get into the strong mid game and maybe early end game, but maybe not an empowered content. But I definitely see the Cinder Strong becoming much more viable than it is now in a legendary form. One of my favorite shields for leveling up could become really good in the end game. We have the close call, and the main interaction here that you really want to keep is that 40% increased dodge rating for each hit that you have recently blocked. Well, now the fact that you can add block chance to this is what makes this crazy. You can add dodge, flat dodge, you can add block chance and block effectiveness, even though there's 50% less block effectiveness. It basically means you want to try blocking as much as possible, but it's more for a dodge. And it'll have a cool teeter-totter effect where the more you block, the more dodge that you're going to get. The more you dodge, the less block, so it starts to drop. It's a cool teeter-totter effect. And I think this very low-level unique will see some runs in the endgame. Will it be as powerful as a Bastion of Honor? Probably not. But I still think that it's going to see a lot more uses. Next, we got the Doublet of Anos Tool. Now, this one's an interesting one because I've tried to run bleeding minions before, especially if you were doing raids before. A lot of people have tried with having hundreds of raids of bleed build with them. This one also works for bleed wolves. It works for if you're just running skeletons and skeleton mages, you can just put a bunch of bleed out there. The bad thing about this was there was no room for those really class-specific affixes that you wanted, but now you can get those in there. So I see this being a really good minion chest. Going forward, it's going to give those minions a lot more bleed chance, and then that bleed duration is absolutely crazy. So for a high bleed chance, say that you're six bleeding wolves or ten bleeding squirrels or whatever it shall be, adding in more fixes to this could definitely make it into a very good bleed build in the next patch. And there are not very many bleed builds out there. Then we have the Drasting, and I think this one's going to come in super helpful for if you're playing Serpent Strike or if you're playing a Poison build that does a lot of attacks. The main problem with this weapon before was it had such a slow attack rate that many people couldn't use it just because of how slow it attacked. You weren't able to apply a whole lot of poisons, even though you had a ton of poison chance, even you know plus levels to your poison skills. So what's crazy about this is in the next patch, you can actually add a ton of, you know, if you have a tier 7 melee attack speed and you put that on here, it's going to make a huge difference and make it feel much better. You can also get even more increased poison damage and poison chance put onto it and all attributes. So it's absolutely crazy how much you could do here. And the reason why I say all attributes is each point of that dex is going to give Serpent Strike more poison chance by itself. So you're basically getting three different stats that give you poison chance, which is crazy for a weapon. I definitely see this one being pretty good in the end game, maybe with the new form, but with Serpent Strike in general, I think it's going to be really good. Then we have the Dream Thorn, and hands down, this is some of the people's favorite way to level up, especially on the Sentinel class. The amount of void penetration that you get with this thing is crazy, but what's cool about it is now we can add in even more damage or attack speed or even crit chance to it. So one of the things that's going to make this really good is the fact that you could get a tier 7 melee crit chance added to it and suddenly you can get into a 100% crit build that wasn't possible when wearing the Dreamthorn before. With that void penetration, adding in another tier 5, tier 6, tier 7 flat added void damage to this would take the damage through the roof and you would be endgame viable right off the bat. So really cool to see what people do with the Dreamthorn, especially since it is a lower level unique and it drops quite often. Then we have Edoras Path. The reason this one's really cool is it gives you a lot of move speed. It's also already got flat health. It's got healing effectiveness. And what I really like about this is we're not exactly sure how Entangling Roots is going to proc on this in the next patch, if it's just going to shoot off or what the default function of it will be. But what I really like about this is that it's already got health on it, and you can add in three more health things. You can get Vitality, Increased, Hybrid, or Flat Health put onto it, and it's really going to give you a ton of health while giving you some healing effectiveness, and you can even add even more move speed onto it, which is crazy since it already can roll with 35% move speed. You being able to throw another 20 on there is pretty crazy. I, I definitely see a lot more builds going a lot faster in the next patch. Then we have Enzanglius. 
this one is pretty much a no-brainer. You know that if you can put health on this, it's going to make low-life builds go absolutely more nuts. There's not just life. I mean, you could, like you could see in the uh, forum post that they gave us, they put on vitality increased in flat health, and it was ridiculous. I mean, you're looking at like 600 more health on a chest piece. You couldn't get it before. You can also put in rare fixes for minion builds or whatever it is you're running. This will be a very crazy, crazy piece to see what people do with. Just had to put it in there. We have the Fighting Chance. This one gives a lot of increased melee damage. You do take a little bit more damage. You gain health on kill, but you also get movement speed. And the fact that you can now add hybrid health and even more melee, increased melee attack speed and things like that, it's. I think it's going to be a very nice one that perhaps some people that haven't used it before or only used it like in the first 20 levels of the game or 30 levels of the game will now be able to use it more often in the end game. Then we have the Grimoire of Necrotic Elexars. And this is one that... It's kind of over, I should say underrated, but I think that it's it's going to do quite well as a legendary. So it gives you some vitality. But the big thing is when you use a potion, you take less necrotic, void, and poison damage for 4 seconds. And you also have 30 to 40 necrotic damage added to your melee attacks and spells for that 4 seconds after a potion use, which is crazy. But now that you can add in everything that you need in that class-specific slot, all those rare... Um, plus levels to skills, now that you can get health on it, now that you can get resistance on it, I do see this as becoming more viable in the end game because that is a lot of flat damage that was hard to put on a build before, but now that you can craft things onto it, could be much better. We have the Hammer of Laurent, and this is one of those things that has that interesting thing where you get plus one melee physical damage per level, so you're thinking, oh man, if I'm at level 100, that's 100 flat added melee physical damage, that's huge. It's one of these uniques that you can use through the entire game. However, there are better two-handed weapons and this one attack slip, but now that you can put on melee attack speed, now that you can give it melee critical strike chance, now that you could add even more melee physical damage to it, and you can have those suffixes for your chance to slow or chill or frailty or all those, this one could become viable as a two-handed endgame legendary, which will be pretty cool. Then we have Hell's Reach. This one I'm pretty excited about. I've always liked using it with Cinder Strike early game, and it feels good early game, but then it falls off pretty quick. But now that you can get more added both fire damage to it, now that you can you know do several things with it, perhaps it'll be able to take you much further into the campaign or perhaps even into the end game. So if you're planning on leveling an alt marksman and you've got a couple of these, you could have one that's got a higher level requirement due to some adding some affixes and making it legendary, and you could have the base. So maybe from level 1 to 20, you use Hell's Reach, and then from level 20 on, you use the legendary Hell's Reach, which would be pretty crazy. A lot of uniques I want to see like that, where you use the base one to get you going for the first 15 levels, and then you swap out to a legendary version of it and make it feel even better. The Humming Bee already is something that's awesome, people love it, you get all that ward on melee hit, it attacks very fast, but now you get to add more things to it. You could add damage or crit chance, you can do health on hit, a lot of crazy things you can do with the Humming Bee that are going to make them even more powerful for the leveling process, and perhaps even into the end game. Modi's Cage, another one. Curious to see how it works in the next patch with all the transformation changes, but this one gives you elemental resist, which can offset that resistance that you're losing from Chimera's Essence if you're wearing that uh, amulet. And then this one also gives you strength. It gives you cast speed, which we don't know exactly what all the tools will be to the wearbear and how much lightning it. I don't think it'll be a caster per se, but it is kind of cool to see exactly what we're going to be able to do with this and be able to add more stats to it. Not to mention you can be a white fur werebear. We have the Lessons of Metropolis, and this one I really like because you get a huge amount of dodge rating when you've been hit. And if you match this up with the close call and you take a block, that flat dodge rating with the increased dodge rating from close call can make you a very, very dodgy person while leveling up, which is huge. This one also gives you less damage taken while moving, and the fact that it was always low on a little on the increased movement speed, you can now add more movement speed to it. You could add increased dodge, flat dodge these things to it to make it even better. I definitely see some good dodge boots in the future. Then we have the Prison Wraps, and this one goes without saying. Very low level. It's going to have a very high potential to get legendary potential on it. Uh, I can't say high. It'll still be very rare. But having something like this that's already an endgame builds like Nova Boy is going to be crazy that you can now get more health or those rare class-specific affixes on it. This is going to be a very, very good unique, so keep an eye out for your Prison Wraps, and hopefully you can get one with a 3 or 4 legendary potential. 
We got the Quicksilver Coil. So this one has that chance to gain haste for you on a hit. You only get it for one second, but as long as you're doing lots of hits, putting this on something like the Auto Bomber means that you would like constantly always have haste, which would be really cool. It gives you increased melee and bow attack speed as well as some health regen. And then it gives you 100% critical strike chance with the third strike of Flurry, which isn't really needed because Flurry can get to 100% crit for all of its hits really, really easily. But I do like this ring just for the fact that it's got that haste on hit and now you can add affixes to it so you can basically on some builds that do lots of hits all the time have permanent haste, which goes along with saying and talking about having all of the increased move speed, I definitely see some builds going a little more zoom zoom in the next patch. Then we have Reach of the Grave, and the Reach of the Grave, I can't really think of anything that I would add to it. I think it's just still going to be good even not legendary. But if there's something that you would add to it, because you can't put like minion spell, minion damage, minion physical, minion dot damage, you can't put any of that on it to make it even better, which kind of sucks because it's a wand. If there's something that you would add to this, I want to know in the comments below because I really want to make a legendary reach of the grave because it's already so good for the whole leveling process for the necromancer as, you know, using bowmen and mages. We have the Riverbend Grasp. Now this is a big one. This one is huge because this one gives you that dodge rating and health, but then it's the added throwing damage and the increased throwing damage that's huge. And this is having, it's even been used in some end game builds already. So I can imagine getting a legendary version of these and being able to get your hybrid health or an affix uh, for a, uh, a resistance, being able to get that critical strike avoidance, being able to get more attack speed or get dex or whatever it is that you're aiming for as an attribute on that build. Being able to put that onto the riverbend is going to make it so much more viable. Another one that I think will be used a lot. We got the Stormhide Pause. Now this one's another big one, just like the last pair. This is one you would use like for swipe. It has a lot of things that are very powerful, especially early on, but then it kind of falls off. But the fact that you get increased lightning damage, that you get so much flat health, that you get plus one level to swipe, you get all attributes, it covers your cold resist, and now you can add more things to it. This one is huge, especially with that amount of health and the plus one to skill and plus one to attributes. Those are a lot of, of passive things you get with this that make it very, very powerful. So I'm excited for this one as well, especially using it on the Druid class or the new Werebear and seeing where you could push it. And we have the Ashen Crown. Again, this is another one along with the Prison Reps with Nova Boy. It's just going to go to a whole new level. It's a very powerful, powerful crown. It's not a super high level requirement. You only got to be level 42, so it's likely to drop at some point with at least some legendary potential for you without struggling too hard. I think this one's going to be even more powerful in the next patch. And then we have the Claw, and the Claw gives you a ton of health, it gives added damage for minions, and then of course it lets you summon all of your wolves up to your maximum companion limit. Now, another cool thing is one reason people don't use this is because sometimes it's mandatory and they want to use it, but sometimes they take the points in the skill tree instead to just get up to their maximum number of wolves. With this, now that you can add in more health, now that you can do minion stats on it, and the fact you can do a resistance or something else in the suffix slot, it opens up a lot of options, and I see a lot more claws, a lot more fangs being used in the end game minion builds, especially for the Beastmaster. And then the Falcon, and this is my favorite chest. This is my chest that I start every character out on because that 15% increased movement speed if you've hit an enemy in the last five seconds is huge. It allows you just to fly, plus it gives you some dodge rating, which is really nice. It falls off pretty quick by level 30. You probably don't want to wear it anymore. But now that you can add stats to it and make it legendary, I definitely see some Falcons for that move speed being very popular in the endgame because many of you guys know move speed is king. Being able to move out of danger before it hits you is a big part of Last Epoch. So a lot of these move speed uniques I think are going to become very, very potent. And we have the Thorn Slinger, which gives you that plus one level to physical level of skills, which is huge. It gives you some chance to bleed on hit. Again, movement speed. So there's some crazy things about this belt. Thorn Slinger is definitely a belt. I see a lot of legendary potential, and it's, it's going to be big, I think, in the next patch. Definitely one that you're going to want to find and hopefully get some legendary potential on. And then we have the Tongue of the Aberrant Seer, and this one's, again, huge. For a ring, this one gives you poison on spell hit. So poison chance on spell hit is pretty huge. It gives you plus one to the spell poison level skills. You can wear two of these. It gives you plus to all attributes. You can do that twice. And then, of course, it reflects some damage, but it also gives you increased poison damage. And now adding up to four more fixes to that is huge because you can get more poison damage. You can get health now. It's kind of crazy what you can do with this. And since you're getting that plus six attributes, if you wear two of these, on top of that, say you're playing this on like a Necromancer or some sort of ward build, you can also put intelligence on it. So it's even more stats. It's kind of crazy what you'll be able to do with some of the ring slots. 
Then we have the Viper Tail, which hands down is going to be one of the most powerful legendary belts in the next patch because everyone already wanted to use it for the dodge rating, for the poison chance, but now you can finally add that hybrid and flat health to it or increased health so that you can have a ton more survivability. You can now put, when you use a potion, that you'll cleanse of all effects on it. Like you can do all the things you needed to do to a crafted belt and put it on the Viper Tail now, which is huge. We got the wing guards, another one for either dot build applicators that want that melee attack speed. Now you can get it twice. This one is another one that gives you haste on hit. Wing guards is going to be a very popular choice for getting into some legendary spots. The woven flesh. So this one works really well for getting your 100% critical strike avoidance right off the bat. And then most people, once they get their critical strike avoidance sorted out, kind of throw it off. But now that you can add stats to it and you can have just one stat do all of your critical strike avoidance, the Woven Flesh may make a comeback. It depends what other chess pieces are good for the build you're doing. But if it's just a normal crafted chess, chess that you wear, you can just throw those stats on the Woven Flesh and you're good to go. Now the level requirement's a little higher on this. I tried to stay under level 50 requirement for all of the ones I've shown you today. But I still think the Woven Flesh deserves a spot because you can target farm it. Boss target farming uniques, especially the ones that drop at a 50% rate, are going to have a lot more opportunity for that legendary potential because you have so many of them that you're going to be getting over and over and over again because you could just keep farming that boss. So I'm very excited for these. And that's all of them. Uh, that was my list of 32 uniques that I think will go from basically just leveling or even just garbage into having some really good legendary potential. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below which one you're most excited about or if there's one that wasn't on the list that you think will do really well, let me know about it. And of course, we all know the higher level uniques are all going to be super powerful. Orion's Eye, you know, the Ravenous Void of Gloves. We, we know all of those. The Last Steps of the Living. Those are all going to be super, super powerful. We know those ones. I try to stay away from doing the high-end ones because those are the most obvious choice. If you ever got a three or four legendary potential, it would be worth a million dollars. It would be crazy. But that's going to be it. As always, stay safe and have a good day.